Hello, um, how is everybody today? If you're watching this video, you're probably having problems with your furnace, uh, not staying running, randomly shutting off. Um, this video is just going to basically uh, be a walkthrough on some of the steps you can take to save yourself some money before bringing in somebody, you know, and paying $100 an hour. Um, we're basically just going to service this furnace. We think um, it keeps on faulting out uh, because it's uh, probably probably dirty. It's probably been a couple of years since we serviced it. Um, we'll walk you through what's going on with it. We'll kind of show you what it's doing. And then uh, me and my buddy are going to dig into it, tear it all apart. We'll show you some of the things that you should probably have. And uh, yeah, go from there. So right now I'm just going to pull off the front cover here. It just slides up. I already had it pre-slid off just to make life a little bit easier. So basically what's happening with this furnace, it's been a, going on now for a couple weeks. Um, basically it'll be running, it'll work fine for a day, two days, and then all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden it'll just stop. And what will happen is I'll come down here and if you look on the side of this box here, there's a red light glowing. Basically that red light is just telling us that something is not right. Maybe the photo eye is dirty, um, the burner could be really dirty, uh, perhaps the bearings of the fan aren't spinning properly. Um, so sometimes you can just hit this button and sometimes it'll work. I'm going to hit this button and show you guys what this does. So as you can see our furnace is on, it's lit inside. So everything's burning the way it should be. So if you just watch here, you know, it seems like it runs for a while and then it, it shuts off at random times. Sometimes it's already dead by now, sometimes it doesn't even light. Um, other times uh, it'll sit here and run for a couple minutes and as soon as the fan kicks on to start blowing the heat through all the vents, it will shut off at that point. So here, we'll just watch this here and uh, my luck, it'll probably this time it'll start working. Um, last time this happened, uh, basically what we did is we went upstairs, we shut off the main power for five minutes, came back down, hit the reset, and everything worked fine. And it ran for another week with no issues. Um, this time it seems like it just, no matter what we do, she just wants to keep dying. So this is a Beckett. As you can see, it's still running, still burning. It's pretty sooty in there though, you can see some smoke. I'm down here in my basement the ceilings are so low you can't stand up so while this is going off over here um, some of the things that you might need to um, to make this a little easier um, basically what we have here is just a basic toolkit um, some paper towel probably good for cleaning off the photo eye um, we got some 320 grit sandpaper um, we have some different cleaners here, uh, WD-40, we have some brake cleaner and some small engine uh, carburetor cleaner. Uh, really we should be using Varsol, but because of the pandemic um, it's impossible to get into any stores in uh, southern Ontario right now. So we kind of just have to use what we have. Still running here. will shut off.
time it's blowing in. Normally by now it would shut off, so it's probably going to make a liar out of me. But regardless of whether it shuts off or not, we are going to go through this. Um, we're going to take it all apart. Uh, we're going to show you guys uh, the steps that can be taken. This thing needs a service desperately. Um, it's very dirty on the inside. We're going to show you how to take the burner out, how to clean the burner, how to clean off the photo eye, and uh, yeah, we'll definitely go from there. If this thing falls out though, I will show you that it did. Fingers crossed it just keeps running. Okay, as you can see, um, strangely enough, this time I hit that red reset button. Um, it cycled the way it was supposed to be. Um, nothing faulted out and it worked fine. Now, I kid you not, you know, um, I've hit that red button now probably three times throughout the day today. Um, I've reset the power and again, sometimes it would uh, cycle and um, we would make it all the way to where the fan starts blowing in heat and it would shut off and fault out. Um, other times uh, I would hit that button and the thing wouldn't even light and then it would fault out because there was no, um, it didn't see any flame for so long. Um, so again, um, yes it's you know it worked this time but the last thing we want in minus 30 weather is uh for this thing to fault out and you know it not fully restart and we're having problems with it um now i want to also let everyone know here that if you hit this red button and you reset it and it runs and it shuts off and then you reset it again and it does the same thing and you keep on doing that over and over um Every time you hit this red button, uh, the pump actually squirts oil um, inside of the burner. And if you keep on doing that, and one of the times you do it and it decides to light, um, it's, it, it's, I wouldn't say it would create a fire hazard. Um, I guess it could. Um, but you know, you'll definitely get a lot of uh, sooty smoke and whatnot. Um, so, you know, if you hit this red button and it doesn't work, you know, come back in an hour or two, try it again. Um, you know, by the third time of hitting that in, let's say, 12 hours, it doesn't work. I would say that you probably have something going bad, like or something's dirty. So, um, in this case, we're gonna we're gonna dig into this. Uh, we're gonna tear it all apart, we're going to clean it all, we're going to put it back together, and uh, we're going to see if that uh, that makes a difference, um, which we think it will, because again, this thing hasn't been first serviced in, in you know, probably two, three years, so, um, yeah, so uh, that's what we're going to do next. Just as a reminder, it's very important that you have enough fuel in your tank, so keep that... Uh, in mind ours is very low but we have enough fuel to definitely make the furnace run so that is one of the one thing that we can eliminate um it's definitely not stopping because it's out of fuel so check that because um you know it's something that some people some people forget that okay so the next really important thing to do here is to shut the breaker off to the furnace um if you're not sure what breaker it is then you know just to be safe, shut the main one off. Um, in this case, we know which our breaker is. It's saying here, uh, furnace number three. We're gonna go over to number three. Um, it's a 40 amp breaker, so I'm gonna say that's probably right. We're gonna shut that off. Oh, we didn't lay out, just these ones right here. Yeah, three and five, I guess. Okay, now we'll double check to make sure the power is all off. Okay, so just to show this real time, um, I shut off uh, number three here, which is marked furnace, which I did not do. Um, when I shut that off, I went over and I pushed the temperature gauge up on my uh, thermostat that uh, runs the furnace, and um, it still ran. So clearly, that's not the right breaker. Um, so what I did was I turned the furnace on so it was running, and then I started going through the breakers, and I found that... 15 and 17 were actually the uh, breaker that um, controls the uh, furnace, which is marked on here, uh, basement and our back room. So 
Um, that is one way, I guess, of testing. Um, and then what I did just to double check was I turned it back on, the furnace kicked back on. Um, and then, of course, this time when I'm not on camera, it faulted out right away. So we're definitely taking this apart and uh, doing a quick service on it here. I'm pretty sure that you'll see once you... And then you just flip. You don't even have to take that all the way out. You just no, flip it. Yeah. See? And then... Yeah, those are two starter bars. And then I think we just take this There's off. The eye. That's the eye right down yeah, there. Yeah, I cleaned that already. Yeah, don't cross those two just in case. No. So oh. that's that's the photo eye right there, and that basically does what? The photo eye looks pretty clean. The uh, photo eye has to uh, detect how much flame is going. So <clears throat> when the flame gets on there, the two rods will spark, and then you'll the two rods you're looking at right there. Yeah. They'll go inside and they'll spark with a big size arc across it. And then the oil will come on and the flame starts. As soon as the flame start, the electric eye here, this is a lot of times the problem is they're just not very clean. Yeah, they get like soot it all over It is a little bit dirty. You can almost Q -t take a Q-tip and clean the end of it. Q-tip? Yeah, you don't want to use any type of oil that's going to leave a resin on it. Because yeah. once that dries, you're going to have a resin film. Okay. And the eye will catch that resin film and shut everything down. Right, okay. So, so this you... won't work? Yeah, Q-tip probably? I can uh, get one. I can go get a Q-tip. That... Or you can put this on the end of a screwdriver. Yeah, something like that. Maybe just twist it up in a little knot, maybe. Yeah, the power is off on that, so... Because I've seen videos where guys take a screwdriver and put it across there and then... Just to double check it. Yeah, and then you see like a fucking big giant arc. Well, it's off right now, right? Yeah. Well, just to make sure. I don't really need that extra. <laughs> <laughs> and these, these eyes are really sensitive. No. I can hold the light. You can't see too much when I'm doing this. But... That's all right. Here comes the spill. Nope. No, like you said, no spill. So now Maybe I think that you, you just take, take off that, that collar nut. And this other thing too. I don't think you have to take that off, no? I think you just have to take that thing off. Tap. Look at you, eh? Who needs channel locks? It's loose, eh? Well, it was just snug tight. It didn't have to be super tight. You are correct. I think all the guts is going to come out here in a second. Which will make life easier because you can just clean everything that's on the end. Watch it. It might be hot because this was running not too I'll long ago. Put the light down a little bit more. Yep. Just so I can see what's going on. I don't want to start moving stuff and all the guts fall out. Yeah, I think you just wiggle wiggle and the whole thing just kind of... Look at that. Okay, so what we'll do... Beauty. It's filthy. It's the filthy. End of it. we'll the end see. of it. This here is supposed to be clean. Yeah. So that is the end of that issue. should be clean and I think that's the issue because there's where your, your, your oil comes out of. Yeah. So these are the... These those are, those are electro the electrodes, yeah. and they're nice and clean, which is good, because usually what happens is they'll burn their way back, and sometimes you have to bend them in a little bit. See how they're not exactly perfect? Yep. When somebody's probably bent this one in a little bit more. But I'm thinking that the, the right, issue that is, filthy. is going to be this here. With the nozzle-wise, and it might wipe off, and it might not. That's might not hurt the spray. Might not hurt the... You bring it outside or well you don't want to push the dirt in that hole there's a yeah. hole right here for sure is that brake clean uh no that's brake clean over here is it still hot or no 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 everything's cool it's so random eh like when i started making this video it actually works fine you've seen yourself before where it just falls out though over and over oh yeah right? yeah well if it's faulting out like it's saying then the flame was probably getting small and that means it's not burning all the, all the fuel, and that's why it's getting all carboned up too. 
Yeah. So then the flame keeps getting smaller, and then the electric eye can't see the flame, it'll lock it out. Okay, yeah. There's three safety issues that are in furnaces. Yeah. Your fan, when your furnace goes to fire up, what it'll do is the fan has to come on first. And a lot of people, you see it, it's up in here. I can't see it right now, it's hidden somewhere. But the electric fan comes on to make sure there's exhaust. Yeah. Once it knows there's exhaust, the it'll ignite and it throws out the flames. Once it ignites, it throws out a flame and there's a temperature rod on it. And it knows that there's a flame there because it can feel the heat. Right. And once it knows that's there, or the electric eye is on it, and the electric eye can show that there's flame, then it'll just keep it all stay running. The furnace will keep continuously It'll running. do its cycle, yeah. Yeah, but if the eye says that the flame's not big enough, it'll go out. Okay. Uh, so that's probably what's happening, yeah. If the fan doesn't come on, it'll lock out. It'll lock out. So there's a lot of, there's three, always three little issues. Yeah. The flame... The, it's always something the simple, eye eh? eye or the, the electric eye or the, the flame, the electric eye, and the fan. Got you under the gun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you got that right. <laughs> Does he have this right? <laughs> <laughs> so you're just basically, basically what we're doing is we're just cleaning the tip off of this. Yeah, because that's the fire tip and see how dirty it is still? Yeah. Still got like a tar. Because oil is, stove oil is so dirty. So we're just putting some carb spray on it because we don't have Varsol. Because the pandemic uh, makes it absolutely nuts to do any kind of shopping. Um, the I just didn't want to have any kind of oil on the laser eye because it's so sensitive. Yeah. So I just thought it's better to just use a Varsol because it'll wipe clean and you won't have a, a scummy line on it. Oh, okay. think that should almost do it I'd say yeah and that's that would make sense why it would run for a while and then not run yeah because yeah. like well, you said his eye is not catching it that's what will shut it down right away yeah but it, it lights properly so that means the igniter's working that's these two rods yep and then it'll say to squirt oil with the igniter comes on and goes zzzz. Then it'll say that it's good, it's working. It'll throw the oil to it. Okay, so we'll put it back in. So do the same thing, put it back in. Just put it in real gentle. It just sort of sits down on the bottom. There's three, three little legs on it. It sits like that. And it's like slick as can be. Oh, you got to put that collar nut back on. Yeah, that might help. I would have realized as soon as I tried to tighten it, because it would have pushed it inside. Yeah. So does it go like that? Yeah. Yep. Just... We would have realized when we look back on the video and be like, oh shit, we forgot that collar nut. Yeah, then we look, look <laughs> like idiots. No wonder it's not running right, yeah. Well, as soon as you went to tighten that, the whole thing would go in. Right. And you'd realize that you forgot something. That doesn't have to be super tight, just snug, so it's not gonna move anything. Yeah, don't be going and stripping stuff now. Oh, I'm famous for that, so you gotta <laughs> leave your muscles behind when you play with these because it's all just light stuff. Yeah. And then. So, do you think now that that line's gonna have to be purged, or do you think. No, this line is after the pump, so all the liquid's right. up into the pump and this. Yeah. It might burp once or twice and then all of a sudden fire up. I don't think it'll give us too much of an issue because you are going to have this far. Yeah. So the furnace might lock itself out saying there's no fuel. But I doubt it. It'll try it and try it. It'll do like three tries and if it can't get it, then it'll lock out. So it'll, in three tries, I think it should push the fluid up that far. Sweet. That's not so bad after all, eh? No. No, I Save thought you. we'd have to pull that hole thing out that's save you better. hundreds of dollars calling somebody in yeah they usually are like 130 dollars to show up and basically i think they come down here and do this they might change that filter for you and they might change the filter on the furnace but still it's a 130 dollar charge when you can't have uh brake clean and stuff like that it's only like five bucks and yeah, and how sure long is this? Like 10 minutes? This is all real time. Yeah, 10 or 15 minutes, but you just got to make sure your breaker's off. 
uh, like Will was like Will was saying here, make sure you double check because some a lot of houses are labeled that that's the furnace on the breaker, but it isn't. Yeah. So you're better off if you can get the furnace to fire up somewhat, kick it off on the breaker then, so you know for sure. Yeah. It's really important to make sure you know. Because it's if shut you off properly, put your hand across those two springs right there. This takes 120 hydro. Yeah. And jumps it up to 220, yeah. which 220 doesn't even give you a chance to live. It'll it'll just kill you. Yeah. So when the eye looks okay, and I'd almost say that it's ready to try fire up again. There's your 516s. The other wing was never on there holding it. They just had the one. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Because yeah. Okay. I'll let you hold this. Super tight. And I will. You can you look know. at it if not. I'm so gonna what do you? Flip it on. The... I'll go turn on the crowd. Yep, yep. So it's just an easy clean. It's nothing major clean. Sometimes people pull this whole motor out, which you have to disconnect this line, and then you can vacuum out the pot itself inside there. It's a double insulated pot. But everything fired up really good and quick. You can see the flame in there. It actually looks like there's a better flame now. I don't it's think not, it... It's not as sooty either. In the last video I got, you look in there and all you see is smoke rising up. Oh, okay. All kinds of smoke. Well, it, it looks like a brighter flame, so I think it's burning more of the, the stuff. I was just telling people too, if you when you unbolt this and take the whole thing out, it's just usually to vacuum the bottom of the pot, and it's a fireproof insulated pot. Yeah. And it'll leave you a hole, like, bigger than a spray can, so you can reach in with a vacuum. And it'll just be black soot that lands on the bottom. Yeah. But this furnace is so new, it's not going to accumulate that much soot. Yeah. Furnaces that have been in a house for 10 years would get where you have to vacuum an inch of black soot off the bottom of it. Right. And the only reason it causes a problem is because when the fire first lights up, throws all those black soot up in the air and dust and it kind of yeah, gets laid, in the way like of the dust. eye and it's magnetic it sticks to the dust on the end of the laser eye because it's a piece of glass right and it's black so it gets it, it gets shit dirty yeah get on the eye yeah and then the eye will cause problems sweet but i think we I think got that's it. good yeah now it's just the test of time yeah see if she runs halfway through the night without hurting anything Oh, it won't hurt nothing, it'll just shut off. Perfect. Oh, if I ever that? came here before, it's, a, it's another oh. injector. Another tip. Another tip. And the reason what they did last time is they just replaced the tip. Yeah. And I bet you that cost you $100 for that tip. Oh, probably, yeah. Because it's got a, a corrugated screen on the bottom. So do you think do you think that might be, so if, if this fails, I just for other people, this. it might be a good idea just to go buy a new tip and replace the entire tip or if you happen uh, to have one clean it you know what i mean yeah like if you had this one like this and it was crappy i'd yep. sit it in like great clean for a day or two yeah and then just wipe it off gently try not to push on the end of it because that's what a little pinhole is right but it's like a little yeah it's a tiny tiny pinhole there's the fan kicking on that's way cleaner it's burning for sure yeah, I don't see any black soot coming out. There was a little bit of black poofing before. Like you yeah. can see around the door edges where it's gone boom when it lights. It goes Puh. Yeah. And it was shoot, shooting soot. But a lot of times, those little eyes though, are supposed to be sitting in one of these type of packages. But these little eyes are very expensive. They're like $100 for that eye. But they really, if they'd have took the time to clean it, you wouldn't have to pay hundred dollars yeah. but the guys are on a budget and they're on a time limit yeah so when they come in they just go bang 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 put a new eye in yeah a new eye in here a new igniter a new uh, injector and away you go so sweet deal I think we did it most man. of the time is just the the injector and you have a spare one so it actually clean that and keep it yeah it doesn't hurt to keep it and clean it up
and you don't want this getting into any dirt because that's like a it's it's a filter yeah but it's a rock filter so you don't want to spray it with any kind of oil brake clean is okay because it'll evaporate but no kind of oil products but yeah you don't want anything that's going to leave a residue on it residue or it's going to be thick like any like you try to use like wd-40 the oil resin will sit on there yeah and when the fuel goes it goes through it'll kind of choke it a little bit not bad because furnace fuel is oil but yeah it's just okay well there you have it um uh we took it apart um that's pretty much all a uh service guy is gonna do um so yeah, if your furnace starts faulting out and uh, you start having all these issues with it running, turning on, turning off, there you go, it just kicked on. Um, if you have issues, it's likely because uh, the furnace needs a service. Um, something's dirty. As you can see, we pulled out that tip in real time and uh, it was corroded and there was all kinds of crap all over it and that was likely the reason why it was faulting out. So um, I'll keep you posted if uh, it does shut off again. Um, we'll dig back into this and we'll start testing things out like the um, uh, the transformer here and um, other little things just to um, see what else might be going on but I think we we got her I think that was the issue and um, yeah thanks for watching don't forget to comment like subscribe um, we really appreciate it we want to keep doing these how-to videos and stuff so with your guys' help, uh, we could definitely keep doing these. Thanks a lot, guys.